Good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, ready. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. And I'm here today with Victor Odo. What's up guys? He's also one of my best friends and we chill pretty much. It's funny because uh, he lives in Vegas so we go to the gym almost every day together. Uh, sometimes I feel like we should be like social media, like putting it on Snapchat and Instagram and stuff because I think you guys would think it's cool that we uh, hang out so much. But mm. yeah, so we thought we were doing a video today um, on reality transurfing and the top three examples of like real life examples that we can relate to that we've either noticed in our own lives or we've observed in just life in general. Because that's one thing that you guys have been asking a lot for. You guys have been asking a lot for, well, what are practical examples of ways that we can apply it? So in this video, we're going to be sharing some stories from our own lives of things that we've noticed on some principles of reality transurfing. And for those of you who don't know, reality transurfing is a powerful manifestation process. And more so than that, it's actually more of like a... Uh, a philosophy, a way for seeing the world that can just totally transform your life if you start to apply some of the principles and some of the realizations. But there's this idea in reality transurfing that has to do with aligning your goals to that of what you really connect to from your heart, to more of a feeling than anything else. Now, this is something I realized because for a long time when I started, uh, like going, I went full time as a YouTuber, sometimes I would be aware that the best energy I had was when my intention was to more so than to just do what I'm passionate about. So more so, the idea is instead of having money be the goal, like I wanna make X amount per month or X amount per year, the idea is how can I make my goal something I'm really connected to? And what I'm connected to, I'm connected to making videos and I'm connecting, I'm connected to helping people. So when I would focus on those things, I would get so much better result. And any time I'd find myself more so making the money, the actual goal, whether that's like making a certain amount per month or having to sell something, I realized that a lot of times when I would do it from that energy state, I would come up with blocks mm -hmm. and like resistance. I would find that like things just would happen, like little things would happen. I even remember uh, the biggest game changer for me was when I started doing YouTube and doing my passion for a living because um, I can relate this back to maybe a couple years ago. I learned something called Kindle publishing, which is like a way to make passive income online. Um, it's a way that what I would do is I would make these books and I would have like these self-help books that would like solve problems or I'd find out like keywords of what people were typing in. And I would have these books made that were like maybe a hundred pages long that would give and solve, you know, the problem, whatever the topic is. And I would put that out there, but the process of it is like, you know, you have to do certain things in order to get that book and you have to market it and stuff and then potentially make like a couple hundred bucks a month off each of those books to make passive income. So for a while, years ago, I tried doing that and I felt so much resistance. You know, I had to like talk to the, I had to talk to the people that were writing the books. I had to talk and then figure out the marketing, the graphic designers for it. And I just felt a lot of resistance when I was doing it because it felt like work and it wasn't something I was really passionate about. So I did it for a while, but eventually I ended up, uh, realizing it just wasn't what I really love to do. And the game changer for me was when I then started to do something I'm passionate about, like making videos, and I went daily making videos, which seems like a lot of hard work, but I love the process of making videos. So doing that, it was like it made me realize that what I could do is instead focus on the feeling of what I actually love to do, and the results from that were just like, crazy, so much better. Like I started making daily videos, things started to explode very quickly because that was tied to my heart. So under reality transurfing, connected to your passion, connected to a feeling, and things happen much more powerfully than if your goal itself is specifically the money. So that's something that changed my life in a powerful way. Do you have any examples of maybe? No, I'm done, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, also a YouTube reference. Um, there's many way, many spins I feel like you could take on a lot of these reality transferring concepts. Mm -hmm. um, one, one thing that popped in my mind is with YouTube, you know, when you get on YouTube, you, you see that, you discover that certain videos have certain reaction, more likes, more views, more comments. And, and I went through a phase where I was, where I was creating YouTube videos to achieve that end. And I found ironically that that was not necessarily in accordance with my heart, my mission, my passion. And those videos, even if on paper, they should have, they should have performed well, never did. Rather than having just like, like he said, getting down to the root passion, the creative expression, regardless of what form it would take, I just kind of let it come through. And then that would actually ironically um, have a lot better of a result. Mm-hmm. 
That's not exactly the greatest example. Let me think of a better one. That's somewhat something that you, you know we can throw mm -hmm. in there. But uh, I've also had times in my life where I would intend for things. I try to manifest things that I attach to being a solution for some kind of pain I had. Like there's a time when, like a lot of you perhaps after seeing The Secret, the movie The Secret, of course I wanted to manifest the lottery. So I went to try to win the lottery. But really that was not an authentic goal. That was me saying I'm broke right now and I think if I had a lot of money I would be like alleviated of this pain. But that wasn't necessarily like my, my path. It wasn't really in alignment with what my like heart truly wanted, which was just freedom and happiness and abundance. And I insisted on something specific. And I did find I seemed to draw myself through uh, synchronicity. I'd get like signs like to keep playing the lottery, but it just started to feel more and more wrong. And when I started to just try to like, like you said, keep it simple. Like I just want to be happy. I want to have like freedom for myself and my family. Mm -hmm. And then that sort of opened me up to more inspired ideas that would help me with that g more generalized direction. Like, just focus on YouTube, Victor. Do this, Victor. Right. And as I focused on that, not only were they more fun and less drudgerous, sort of like what you were saying with the Kindle publishing, I insisted this must be the means to what yeah. the eventual end you wanted. Um, it, for one, the journey was joyful. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it was way more effective. I never and it's funny because you know? people, people connect to people based on emotion. So it's like... I'm, I'm very passionate with my videos, you're very passionate with your videos, and people tap into that feeling, and that's what makes the growth happen. So mm -hmm. it's not necessarily even just the content, but it's also the energy underneath the content. So if you're bringing energy to the table that's like, hey, here's uh, you know uh, information on spiritual awakening and what I went through and stuff, and it's speaking from your heart, guess what? People connect to that more because mm -hmm. it's an emotion, it's a flow state people are connecting to, and it's helping them at the same point get to the state of being that they prefer. So it's almost like that energy kind of trickles out. Yeah, it does. So another part of reality transurfing, the second part we'll touch on is understanding decrease importance. So I talked about that a minute ago, but when we decrease the level of importance that we give something, uh, we actually increase the probability that we experience it because we make it more so natural for us to experience that in our lives. So I know, for example, with Victor, I wanna to say to you, congratulations. He pretty much is at 100,000 subscribers on YouTube right now. Definitely go check out his channel. Uh, I'm gonna link it at the top of the description box below. He creates amazing videos that have to do with spiritual awakening, helping you navigate through your spiritual <laughs> awakening process. And uh, yeah, he creates amazing content. So get, definitely check that out as well. But um, I know that we were talking about this, and I know you have a story about this as well, mm -hmm. when it comes to understanding the goals, like even a goal of hitting 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I remember that when I hit the goal, I thought it was gonna be this huge feeling, like I was at 99,000 subscribers, I remember I went to bed, I was at 98,000 subscribers, I went to bed, I woke up the next day at 100,000, and I thought it was gonna take a week or two, because I was growing by like four or 500 a day, and I was gonna do like this Q&A, and like all of this stuff planned, but it just happened the next day. It's like I woke up and there it was, and I was like, whoa. And I remember thinking that when 100,000 hit, it was like this benchmark in my mind that when it hit, I was gonna feel so good. It was gonna be this yeah. totally different type of experience. It'd be like, oh, I made it. But really, it was just natural. It was like I make daily videos, natural part of side effect of that is growth. And it was just comfortable. It was just, it was more so just a part of who I am. And I remember that we were talking about this months ago, and you kind of have a story about that because now that you yeah. have hit 100,000, mm -hmm. how does it feel? It's, I'm, I'm like a hundred away. It'll be like probably later today. But, I know, but yeah. But no, no, I know. <laughs> yes, no, this will be relevant. Yeah. It's ironic. We didn't even, I didn't, we didn't like shoot this video in intending to announce my hundred thousand subscribers. I know. It was, just, it was a surprise. It's a fitting story. We came up with like five minutes ago before shooting the video. Yeah. Um, but I had this situation many months ago, probably almost maybe a year ago where one of my videos started to pop as, as Aaron taught me where it just like takes off on YouTube and I did something really stupid yeah and really I remember this. And, it, and it killed the momentum and I'm for a while I was beating myself up about it but anyway this sort of led me to talking to Aaron and uh, so after that spike I went through a phase where my channel was growing quite slowly at least to my for my own expectations and especially compared to what it once was and I was really dwelling on it I was obsessing about the stats and going on and checking like how fast I'm growing several times a day I'm um, really just I wanted to get to a certain threshold. I wanted to get to that 100,000 mark. And I was, me and him hang out all the time, as we said. So he's always, he's always like, dude, Dick, you got to let it go, man. You got to just chill. Don't, don't do that because you're pushing away what you want. 
and ironically, I, I, he speaks about this stuff very well, and he really made a convincing Thank case. <laughs> um, and I applied it, and ironically, I, I stopped caring about the growth or the rate of growth. I just started focusing, again, back to the roots of what it got mm -hmm. me on in the first place, what I love to do, and didn't give it some kind of overly overemphasized priority in my life. Um, and now I'm, I'm growing a lot faster and I, and I'm at a point where I'm at a hundred thousand and I'm, I'm like trying to make myself excited because I truly, as I'll is talking, it, I don't really care. It's just a number. It's not nearly as what I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. And we were talking earlier as well. Like oftentimes when you finally get what you want, it's like that. It's more mild. It's more like as if it's all, always been there. So I think a real a nice trick to manifestation is to try to create that relationship with what you want earlier mm -hmm. rather than seeing it as that so distant. Oh, at this rate, I'll never get to 100,000 rather than just right. let it go and, and try to have, again, more of a neutral relationship with it. It's okay to want things, but not too much. Yeah. It's like that song, that rock song, hold on loosely, but don't let go. If you cling too tightly, you'll lose control. Yep. It's kind of like that. Just you like cling that. too tightly to, to a goal. I wonder if they knew reality transfer thing. They probably did, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's my, that's my story for that. Oh, okay, cool, yeah, that's, it's, it, and it's relevant to me too, because I remember that I was making it, uh, anytime I'd make it like a really big deal, even growing up to 100,000, I would start to feel resistance, and it was almost like there'd be a direct reflection of that happening, like manifesting. So, yeah. the more I would just allow it to be, see it as natural, I still intend for growth, but it's more so the growth of just the subscribers, it's the growth of being able to help other people grow. It's being able to add more value to more people. So as it's a more pure intention, I find that it's much more powerful and as especially as connected to my goal itself, which is making videos, helping people, speaking and you know, doing events now, which is something I started doing recently. So that's tied to passion and I anytime I do that I get a direct reflection that that is something, you know, yeah. that's powerful. One other one that I'll share with you guys is actually one. I was moving into this place uh, about a week and a half a week ago. I think it's been about a week now. And when I was doing that, I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast. And uh, while I was moving my stuff and putting things into boxes, and I, I realized that some people use, you know, the ideas of decrease importance without even realizing it. And one of them had to do with a guy that was being interviewed by Joe Rogan, who has a podcast who I'm sure many of you have heard of before. And his name is John Jones. And I'm sure you watch UFC, so you know who John Jones is, you know. Um, he's like this, uh, was he a heavyweight? Light heavyweight. Light heavyweight. He was like an amazing fighter. And uh, he was like a champion for a long time, and then he got busted for steroids, right? Was it steroids? Yes. And he had some like run-ins with the law and stuff like that. Kind of a very controversial guy, but nonetheless, he was like a very skilled fighter. And I just, I had that on, I was listening to it, and it was interesting because he's like known for being a partier. Like he parties a lot, like he's one of the best at what he does. And um, he was being interviewed by Joe, and Joe asked him a question, was like, you know, why, why would you go out and party? Like you, he's, he would get like blackout drunk a week before he would go out to for a fight. So he'd have a fight on a you know a Saturday. A week before that he'd go out and get blackout drunk, he'd party and he would do all this crazy stuff and then he would get into like, you know, a week before start prepping. But he would always do that. And Joe was like, yo, why why do you do that? Like what's the purpose of getting blackout drunk? Don't you think you could be so much better if you didn't do that and you just went straight into your training and you you were completely focused? He said, you know Joe, he's like, I feel like if I got blackout drunk the week before, the reason I would do that is I would get crazy drunk because whoever my opponent is, if I fought that opponent and for some reason I lost, I would feel like the reason I lost was because I went and got blackout drunk a week before. So in a way, he would use that as a safety mechanism so that his ego didn't take such a big blow when he did, or if he did for some reason lose. And in a way, he inadvertently decreased importance by taking some of the pressure off because then it's okay either way. So this is like, this. I, when I heard that, I was like, oh, that's an exact, you know, that's an exact kind of example of decreasing importance. Because he took away the pressure of himself and he kind of made it okay. I remember also early on in the day, or like with manifestation, something I used to tell people to do is it's almost like you kind of have to use mind tricks with yourself, like Jedi mind tricks. It's like, make it cool to achieve your goals but not like you absolutely have to. Make it cool if it would happen, intend for it to happen, but be cool either way. It's this paradox, it's this balance that when you have this balance, you have so much power because it's like, this doesn't need to happen for me to feel a certain way, but it's like, it'd be cool if it happened, but I'm okay either way. So it's intention 
with being okay either way because you're good either way. It's the frame from which you're within you're coming from. It's the energy from which it comes. Yeah. That's the powerful thing. So that's something I realized in my own life. My goals, becoming more successful, growing on YouTube, it's cool if it happens and it's going to keep happening because it's part of my natural passion and my, my, uh, my joy of what I love to do. But at the same time, it's not something I absolutely am dependent on and if it doesn't happen, it brings me down. So. Yeah, right, right. I think this is something, you know, the decreased importance I think is very powerful. It is, it is. I have sort of a, a real quick example that just popped yeah. in my head that kind of shows a demonstration of how this can work the opposite way when you don't decrease the importance. As a personal trainer, it was, I found there was an interesting phenomenon I would notice with clients. Certain clients were like, were completely like meticulous about every little minute calorie in detail and they were kind of obsessive but mm -hmm. on paper flawless with what and these people would constantly get stuck where their weight would literally not bud or they'd gain weight and it would make no sense it was always the same advice like you got it this is what you told me with youtube yeah relax you're 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 it's a it's a it's an inner state of discord when you're consistently wanting and obsessing about something. So, mm -hmm. like you said, John Jones, he had kind of a unique way of doing it. Whatever, yeah. whatever mm -hmm. unique to you, I would recommend just coming up with some kind of way of tricking your mind or allowing yourself to kind of relax about it. Exactly. Distracting yourself from that, that, that habit of wanting so intensely. And then ironically, you allow it to just flow in naturally. Yeah. It's like, it works that way. Yeah. So anyway. Cool, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think yeah. that, was, that was a great example to throw in as well. So I just wanted to say thank you, Victor, for coming on. Sure, man. It's a pleasure. It's, it's nice. I came here to my buddy's house to check out his new place. It's yeah. awesome. So I appreciate it, my friend. Of course. Uh, definitely, guys, check out his channel. I'm going to go ahead and link it in the top of the description box below. Once again, congratulations on almost yeah, yeah. 100,000 subs. By the time this subs. goes up, it'll be Yeah, that's what I was like, I was like hey, yeah. you know, it'll be close. But thank you. Anyways, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to like this video if you guys liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, we will see you guys on the next bit. Peace. Much love and namaste.